And it is as if the Ashab al Kisa on a night like this were awaiting for this gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open its eyes in the dunya. And you find that they eagerly awaited her birth because each and every one of the Ashab al Kisa were aware of the fact that their sacrifices and the teachings with which they have come to establish on this earth will only manifest itself, will only survive the period of time through the relentless sacrifice and the jihad of this woman. For Sayyida Zainab is that lady through whom the teachings of the Ahl al Kisa continue on this earth. And with this anticipation, they receive Sayyida Zainab. And these are heavy words in an introduction, Ya Ahibai. And you find that preparing a majlis in regards to the wilada of Sayyida Zainab is one of the most difficult tasks that one can undertake. There is nothing within the life of Sayyida Zainab which a person could actually take and joyously celebrate. Indeed, her entire life from the moment that she opened her eyes to the moment that she closed her eyes in the grave, her entire life is dictated by trials and tribulations, Masaib, such that she was given the title Ummul Masaib. Do not, do not get overwhelmed or do not be surprised when you find that a majlis wilada, majlis of farah, of celebration, has this connotation of grief and sadness attached to it. This is from the khususiyat and the particularities of Sayyida Zainab al-Kubra. And in fact, it is the sunnah of Rasulullah and the sunnah of the Ashab al-Kisa to weep on a night like the birth of Sayyida Zainab. Hadith al-Sharif mentions that when Sayyida Zainab salam was born, Sayyida al-Shuhada, two or three years of age, runs towards his father and what is understood is that Amir al-Mu'mineen was out of the house during this grand event of the birth of Sayyidat Nisa al-Alameen just like the way Rasulullah was outside of Medina for as Amir al-Mu'mineen enters into the house Sayyid al-Shuhada comes running to his father for intum ahibai you are living these aspects of history in your mind through these commemorations and it is as if you were there at the door of Sayyida Zainab witnessing this event unfold. Have you seen when there is a newborn in the family? How the rest of the siblings, especially if they are young child, are filled with excitement and each and every one of them wants to be a part of the life of this baby and hold her and they observe the reaction of these parents, of their parents in regards to this newborn child. For the narrations mentioned, Imam al Hussein comes running towards Amir al Mu'minin and he says, Abata, Abata, kad wahabani Allah, ukhtan. Ya Abata, O oh my father, O oh my father. He comes running to Amir al Mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with a sister, has blessed me with a sister. As soon as Amir al Mu'minin hears these words, the narrations mention, that tears begin to fill his eyes, his eyes become watered up. And this heart of Amir al Mu'mineen, this soft, tender heart, this heart that has the sabr, because he knows the unseen and he knows the events that are going to transpire and the trials and the tribulations that this lady is going to go through. The hadith mentions his eyes water up. And then the tears begin to roll down his cheeks. Alama Shustari says, and these tears of Amir al Mu'mineen as Imam al Hussein watches him is just like the way the raindrops come pouring down or drip down the petal of a, leaf, the petal of a rose. 
For the tears of Amirul Mu'mineen drip down his cheeks and his blessed beard. Imam al Hussein says to him, O oh my father, why do you weep? Amirul Mu'mineen lifts Imam al Hussein on his arms. And look at this house of Nabuwa, this house which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for its dhikr to be elevated. The hadith mentions Imam al Hussein wipes the tears from the cheeks of Amirul Mu'mineen. Shay'un ajib wa gharib. In every regular family, in every regular household, it is the mother and the father that wipe the tears from the cheeks of their children. But the house of Ali and the house of Fatima and the imtihanat that they go through is different. The child wipes the tears from the face of his father. And he says, oh father, why do you weep? And Amir al-Mu'mineen looks at Imam al hussein and he says to him, Amir al-Mu'mineen now explains to Imam al hussein whose age is what, two or three. But the fact that Amir al-Mu'mineen explains to him shows us the isma, the infallibility and the level of cognizance that is there within the heart of this child Imam al hussein in the heart of Imam al hussein even at the age of two or three. And Imam al hussein or Amir al-Mu'mineen begins to tell Imam al hussein of how his sister shall be taken as a prisoner in order for this religion's teachings to be established. And you find this is how the Milad of Sayyidah Zainab was commemorated within the house. Commemoration with tears for what she will face. And you find that everything in regards to the personality of Sayyidah Zainab is divine. Each and everything in the personality of Sayyidah Zainab is divine. Attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even her name. For when... Sayyid al Zahra asked Amir al Mu'mineen to name this daughter. Amir al Mu'mineen says, I shall not name her before Rasulullah. I cannot supersede the authority of Rasulullah. Rasulullah comes. Sayyid Zainab is placed in the arms of Rasulullah. Amir al Mu'mineen says to him, Ya Rasulullah, will you not name her? Rasulullah says, and how can I supersede the authority of my Lord? The narrations mention at that moment, Jibra'il al-Ameen descends down from the heavens and he says to Rasulullah, Allah Azza wa Jal sends his blessings upon you and indeed name this daughter Zainab as is mentioned or as is established within the Lawh al-Mahfuz. <laughs> Yani Sayyid Zainab's name was ordained by the Almighty Allah within the Lawh al-Mahfud. Zainatul Ab, Zainab, Murakab from Zainatul Ab.